the tension between the two teams in the stadium. 114th meeting since 1900 when they first played. All Oregon recently and two first-year head coaches in these programs who are doing some experiential learning, Allison Williams. Yes, they are, Jason. For both Washington's Kalen DeVore and Oregon's Dan Lanning, this is their first time experiencing hate week, coaching in this rivalry, but they are both fully embracing the history, the emotion, and significance of this game. Dan Lanning said, we lean into it. It means a lot to a lot of people. This is what makes sports so great, these rivalries, guys. He said, look, each day this week, he had a different former Duck player or coach address the team. DeVore said, there's a lot of pride on the line for UW fans. There's not a function I go to when I'm not asked about it, reminded about the importance of beating Oregon. They've done their best to prepare their guys with this raucous environment. They're blaring the music, the crowd noise behind the offense all week. Michael Penix probably playing in front of the most hostile environment he's faced. He's learning about this rivalry too, guys, but he said hate is definitely the right word to describe it. You can taste it in here tonight. Andrew Boyle boots it away. Oregon and Washington for the 114th time. And we will get eyes first on Michael Penix Jr., the transfer from Indiana by way of Tampa, Florida. He's been described by his coaching staff as very calm in the middle of everything, and he's going to have to be tonight. 23 touchdowns, five interceptions, but you talked about it. The zip on the football jumps off the tape. Well, they throw it all over the field. They do it differently. The Ducks, when you see them on offense, they really threaten the middle of the field in their play-action games. Penix and company, he will spray it everywhere. And I also expect a few more screens in the game plan tonight. There's some motion from Roma Dunze, and it's a throw for Penix on first down, and it's on target for Odunze. His first and likely not his last grab. Jackson Kirkland is from Portland's Jesuit High School. He's at the left side of the line. It means a lot to him to play in this game. You saw Odunze, who has been fantastic this year for Washington as a sophomore. Jalen McMillan, one of the most dangerous slot guys in the country as well, wearing number 11. Penix having to get very close to the line with all the sound. To snap it. Timeout. Allison mentioned the most hostile environment Washington has played in this year, and 44 seconds in, we've seen it. It was Kalen DeBoer running down the sidelines to get that timeout. You are going to see a ton of this. They motion and shift as much as anybody in college football, almost 60% of the time. They do that so they get to the right call, but it takes an awful lot of communication, and Dan Lanning knew it. But the noise and volume in this building could be a great disruptor to that communication. This Oregon defense, DJ Johnson at the defensive end spot is their sack leader back in the lineup. Noah Sewell, who was a tackle machine last year, not the same this year in that department. And Brian Addison getting the start for Jamal Hill, who's out with a targeting penalty last week in Boulder for the first half today. Jalen Polk in motion, and Wayne Talapapa gets the first carry for Washington for a couple of yards. Well, look, can Oregon stop this passing offense? What? Well, look at those numbers and the disparity of it. Some of that's because Oregon has built such big leads. The teams in the fourth quarter get a lot of just garbage yards. But part of it as well is Christian Gonzalez and crew have got to be stickier in coverage than they've been for big swaths of the season. Third down has been a real struggle for Oregon's defense this year. They will run it again. Talapapa with a gash to the outside. And Taj Davis on the edge may have gotten a flag against him. This could be a hole deep down the field. It will still be a first down, but it will take away a number of those explosive yards. Francisco Villar is our referee today. Holding. 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 Offense. 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 
Can't do it better than Rosengarten does Nothing. here. It's sealing the edge. Get outside, no containment. But you'll see the hold on the outside, After right the there. Enforcement in the penalty by Taj Davis. The they love the effort, for but you got to keep your hands inside the frame of the corner bridges. The foul is on number three. One. Thank you, Francisco, for the update on who it was. Very thorough. The, the clicker was on it. We appreciate that as well. It is a first down, as you said, with the spot foul on the holding just short of midfield. Cameron Davis, who's been a touchdown dispenser, is in in the backfield. Penix flowing that way, and it's incomplete. Bennett Williams, the nickel, the veteran, was there in coverage. Six-year player, started his career at Illinois, went to a junior college, and once again, moving the pocket. But Bennett Williams sees the whole play happen in front of him, and there's the experience to not go through the receiver, but go attack the football. Well done, Mr. Williams. Swap into the pistol on second down, and there's a marker. This crowd is definitely part of the game here. Full start. 51 of the offense. Five yard penalty to score second down. How much do you do less of? the motion and the stuff you like to do. You try not to allow this crowd to dictate that. That's Jackson Kirkland, 51. He's making his 45th start. And when you talk about the noise and volume, when it, it impacts a player of his experience, you know it's coming in this building. Cameron Davis gets about a yard, if that. Mace Funa, the defensive end with a stop. So you watch a previous run, right? Get outside of containment, not this time. Funa does an excellent job, gets his hands free, keeps his outside shoulder free, turns the run game in, and makes a third and extra, extra long. Oregon's 126th in the country at getting off the field on third down. They just want to get half of it because I think it's going to be four down territory all over the field tonight. Oregon rushes four from the edge. Penix gets away and runs for the first down. Johnson had him in the crosshairs but got enveloped by Funa, actually. Now, both of them from the edge here, and you've not seen Penix have to do this much this season. He, too, has not been sacked much, but that's what he was known for in his early days. Before ACL injuries, before shoulder injuries, he was an elusive QB in Indiana. And what an enormous conversion with his legs. Take the toss. Throw it down the sideline. Beautiful catch by Colt, the tight end, for a first down Washington. Those third and 15 conversions suck the life out of a defense. And, and that's exactly what these guys in purple did a week ago against Oregon State. It was third down conversion after third down conversion. Many of them third and 10 plus. And I just got to tell you, there's nothing more confidence instilling offensively and demoralizing defensively. Especially when the defense gets home like they did on that third and 14. Empty. Panics knew he had to get rid of it and incomplete for Colt. Second down. Exactly right. This is what five years of experience does. Penix is going to feel and know he's got an unblocked defender. Empty formation. You only have five. The line slides to his left. He doesn't even have to look at DJ Johnson. He knows that that little kiss is coming. I thought it was interesting the way he put it to us. He said, Penix did, I don't want to get stuck with the ball. I need to know where every one of my outlets does. Oh, and he sure does. That's a middle screen for Davis, and it's blown up. Noah Sewell was right there on his hip. Well, that's one of the better plays that we have seen from the all-conference player the last couple years. He got to defeat two blocks. He anticipates that middle screen. He beats two linemen. And here we go again, Jason. A third and extra long situation. Can the Ducks get off the field? 
And can the Huskies continue to gain confidence in this down and distance? They break off Westover, the tight end, to go outside at the top of the formation. Penix to the sideline, and this is complete to Odunze for a first down. And of all of the throws that Michael Penix makes, this is his best. This is where you see that elite arm strength show up. Doesn't matter what hash he's on. That is an out route, and the ball is out well before Adunze ever breaks. And it hits him right in the rib cage. Third and 14, third and 10. The number two third down offense in America showing you why. You just said it. His awareness of where everybody is and where the ball needs to go is exceptional. Empty again. Penix, first down throw. It's incomplete. He put it right on the hands of Sam Adams, and he could not make the catch. You look at the demeanor of Penix. It just doesn't change. He knows that's a miss. That could have been a touchdown. Adams, one of four tailbacks you will see for the Huskies tonight. Penix on time. Terrific route combination. The youngster just couldn't corral it. 12th play of the opening drive for Washington. They run. Telepapa is in. Untouched and undaunted the Huskies. Boy, Rosengarten will be up by Nivalu right here. This is where the two get it done. I mean, look at this hole that those two men create. It has been the left side of that line that has been the dominant. But the right side there, Rosengard in particular with the kick out. What an opening drive for these Huskies. Washington, the best team in the FBS in opening drive points, has done it again, and the Huskies are up seven early. Fox College Football, sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Oregon is 15-2 in its last 17 against Washington, but the Huskies have been outstanding on their opening drive and two third-down conversions on third and long. Yeah, and you just see the calm, cool, collected demeanor right there in Michael Penix. How about that opening drive? That one in particular overcome two drops, two penalties, and a third and 10 and third and 14 as well. Back to the seed for Oregon. Hudson to the outside, got a big block, and he's across the 35-yard line. And we welcome you to Bo Nix and his home from Alabama to here in Eugene, Oregon, and Lane County. He has become an undeniably, brilliantly accurate passer. 22 passing touchdowns, but also the feet have been a major weapon for him at the goal line in the red zone. What do you make of this transformation? A, a confidence, a, a ownership. He knows this is his system. Kenny Dillingham is OC, one of the best in college football at putting a quarterback in a position to maximize his skill set. And that's exactly what they've done with Bo this year. A lot of formational changes from both of these teams. You see Irving going to the backfield. Matavau, the tight end, attaches at the bottom. And Nix. Steps up in the pocket. He's only been sacked once this year, and there are the legs into a slide short of midfield. This Oregon offensive line anchored by Alex Forsyth, who has in the past even checked out of plays for Bonex. He watches so much tape. Bucky Irving has been a revelation in the backfield this year out of the Chicagoland area. And we see Bucky Irving get a first carry and break a couple of tackles for no gain. Braylon Trice was in there first. Bucky Irving On the other side of the line with him is Jeremiah Martin, who is a okay, good at the defensive the end forward. spot. On the second level, Cam Bright, 51 tackles this year for him. And then in the secondary, Asa Turner, according to Kalen DeBoer, has to have an above-average game with all of the binds you get put in as a safety against Oregon. Nix has felt a little 
heat here. He does get it away for Irving and Dominic Hampton with the stop. But he's had to move his feet a little bit. Well, he's going to because it's a very active Washington front. But kind of like that first scramble, that's the danger. That's what DTR, that's what Jaden Delora did to this defense and putting up massive production because they stunt and they move so much. There will be opportunities for Bo to extend plays. And it's a third down run for Oregon and Bucky Irving pushing forward about a yard short and this is really no decision here, right? No. Two of the most frequent fourth down offensive teams Time out for in the Pac-12. That looks like Ryan Walk, who's been battling injuries like Forsyth next to him is down. Time out on the field. Local product from here in Eugene. Sheldon High School. A banged up offensive line. Fourth down when we come back. Fox College Football is sponsored by Discover. And by Wendy's Breakfast. Get a select croissant and small season potatoes for three bucks. First meeting, Washington, Oregon, 1900. 43 nothing, Oregon. There were fewer seats than there are today here at Watson Stadium. Uh, look, Oregon is very good on fourth down. Very good. 15 to 20. 17 QB sneaks on the season. Bo Nix has become so adept at that play in particular and why they've been so outrageous in these short yardage situations. Ryan Watt helped off the field. They'll go out of the eye on fourth down and run it with Noah Whittington. And he does have the first down for the Ducks. Noah Whittington. Now we have an injured Washington Husky. It is Jordan Perryman, the corner. They are very thin in the secondary in the first place with Devon Banks out. He was at the collision point there with Whittington. He was the force player as that ball bounced outside. Yeah, these collisions speak to the emotion and the violence in this matchup. I'm going to see this collision here with Perryman who walked off the field holding his shoulder. But these backs for Oregon may not be the biggest on paper, Jason, but we've seen them a multitude of times. And, man, at 195 pounds, whether it's Irving, it's Whittington, they are physical. And Perryman taking the brunt of that contact. Irving, one of the best at breaking tackles in the Power Five. Bonix off play action. Steps up, snaps it off, and it's Troy Franklin, his favorite target for a first down, Oregon. The Ducks love, love, love the play action and what it does at the second level in the windows that it creates. RPOs, play action, movement, so many different tools in the tool bag. It's a run, it's Whittington coming back and a flag is in, it's first and goal if it stands for Oregon. Personal foul, hands to face, 58 of the offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. They get Jackson, Powers, Johnson, the sophomore. And I think it is actually going to be Harper coming across here. It may be both of them, but you'll see the hands right there go up to the head. That's actually 55, Harper. Powers Johnson, never happy, nor his parents. You yeah. <laughs> about the wrong designation of an old lineman. You don't want that to happen. No, you don't. Huskies overcame a couple penalties on their opening drive. Here's a biggie for the Ducks to do the same. That's 32 yards that go away. Would have been first and goal inside the five. Instead, it's a run for Bucky Irving, who wanted to break the tackle of Mishael Power. Second down coming up, and Oregon is very dedicated to running the football. With four different backs, with a quarterback, times they can even involve tight ends. And for these corners like Powell, you already saw the Perryman, you are going to have to be secure. Because this group up front gets a body on a body. And it's imperative for the guys on the back end to be sure tacklers in space. It's a freshman, Jay Avi on green, coming in at the bottom of the screen. Nick 
rifles this over the middle, and he's got the tight end Terrence Ferguson. So it's third down and long for Oregon. You can feel Terrence's his feet moving a little bit tonight. You mentioned that right away. And Dan Lanning knows that these Huskies are very aggressive. This group up front, number two in the conference, and getting after the quarterback, 26 sacks on the season. And this may be a little more movement out of Nix in the pocket than we've seen this season. Third and 13 for Oregon. Nix felt it that time and had to spit it out quickly. It's incomplete. Braylon Trice got in there and busted down the door. Well, it's these two edge guys, six and six and a half sacks, and it's Trice on the left that goes right through Bass, the left tackle, right there. And Nooks, Nicks, again, you can kind of see those feet shuffled a little bit more than normal. He shuffles right into that contact. And for the first time in five weeks, a field goal attempt for the Ducks. Yeah, you don't see a whole lot of anybody kicking field goals, but Camden Lewis, who is perfect on the year at eight for eight. From 43. This is on the way, and it is once again perfect. That's a win for the Huskies. You hold this offense to field goals. And that offense in purple just carved Oregon on third down. First time around, Penix is back now. By Hampton, by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. Not the easiest job waving and holding on to the motorcycle at the same time. I imagine the training is rigorous, especially with left hands. This Great point. You are so astute in that analyst chair. That might have been your best. Well, I know this matchup fairly well, and no surprise to see both offenses go up and down the field. I think they will do that over the course of the night. Penalties, overcoming them, explosive plays will be the huge keys. And Washington took the ball before the game in the first. They'll get it, Oregon will, after halftime, but that field goal kind of flips that a little bit. Washington, if you haven't seen the Huskies play, they were 4-0, and, oh, and the big win was against Michigan State, a very highly thought-of team in the preseason. They lose two in a row at UCLA, kind of the coming-out party for Dorian Thompson-Robinson, but the last three games, including a defensive slugfest last Friday against Oregon State, have reestablished this team that was 4-8 last year. But all the way along, Kalen DeBoer's offense has been electrifying because this guy who picked this school to come to because of the supporting cast is elevating everyone. Penix sets and fires right down the middle. It's a first down to Jalen McMillan, who had nobody around. Well, that ball just slingshot. Penix does not mind going to his right. Told us that. So I can go to my right, I could go to my left, and that time the quick flip of the hips and the rocket shot. Beating that zone coverage, you can see Bossa underneath it. You widen like that in zone and create those windows. Completions follow. Penix said his favorite throw of the year was one where he was rolling to the right because he proved to his coaches and his teammates that he can do that. So they've got some of that in the playbook. Miles Jackson in motion. It's a run, and it's Talib Papa who's driven forward right around midfield. I think one of the keys tonight as well is this for me. When you're facing the number two offense in America in their place, when you've got the veteran quarterback that knows your system inside and out, to me, you maximize every one of these possessions. It doesn't mean you get out of rhythm. It doesn't mean you totally slow it down. But if this is an 8, 9, 10 possession game, it's an enormous advantage for the road team. They'll run it again, and Talapapa, a little hesitation, breaks one tackle and pushes all the way across the 40-yard line. First down, and Washington has been able to run the ball so far. Yeah, they run it to the right. Uh, that time, they run it to the left. Luciano, the center, gets out in front of it. And if you add this kind of balance with the passing game, you put a defense on their heels. It is their fourth run of 10 or more yards already against D.J. Johnson in the Oregon defense. The Ducks are catching them right now. Right, they are not the ones that are hitting. They are not the ones coming downhill. It is the Huskies that are in attack mode. A 
lot of discussion from Sewell there. And this is Cameron Davis right up the middle. And you see the entanglement there after the play. Allison downstairs. Well, we always talk about how this noise affects the communication for the offense, but the defense for Oregon also has to communicate through it. And if you watch them, guys, they are so demonstrative with their hand signals, and it's going on the entire time, especially whenever Washington motions or shifts. You'll see those hand signals change. Make sure everybody's on the same page and has the right call because the noise is a factor for their communication as well. To that point, here's again Washington getting into a formation and Penix making sure everybody up and down the line is on the same page. Play clock down to one. Davis on the run and he's driven down by Brandon Dorless. Third down for the Oregon defense. And Dorless is such a factor because he can slide up and down the line. Can play on the edge, he slides inside. And that's just a brilliant inside rush to create. Here we go, a pivotal third down. First third down of the drive. Once again, they convert. Jalen McMillan, who's been such a danger in the slot this year. Filthy. Filthy in the slot. Right, he just hesitates. Penix knows. Boy, he has such trust, and he rips that tight spiral to a Dunze in McMillan. That time he sets that route up with patience. He stares down Stevens in the slot, and he breaks away from him for the third, third down conversion of this quarter. Oregon has touched the ball once in the first quarter. It's a screen. It's McMillan ducking through for a couple of yards. Keon where Hudson was on him, second down. That's a terrific play by the D lineman to retrace there. They've now tried that two different occasions in the red zone, that little middle screen where Hudson's played a ton of football, Tosh Lapoy. That's heads up defense, but Tosh knows right now he's feeling this first quarter going, yeah. I knew it on tape that this Husky offense was for real, could run it, could throw it. But the amount of time they're taking and just eating up this clock at will. It has been a sleek game of keep away so far by Washington's offense. It's McMillan. He is undercut by the wingspan of Triquez Bridges. Yeah, seven foot wingspan. Troy has told us earlier, you get in that bunch formation, he knows. That's just studying. He knows something is going to be breaking out, and there you see those long arms like a pterodactyl wrapping up with Miller. Third and two. Will they snap it? The answer is yes. It's a run, and it is Talapapa who is denied. The first down line. Mace Funa swatted him. And a big fourth down when we come back. Oregon and Washington. The Ducks sports car offense has been in the garage all first quarter. Get after it. Welcome back to Fox College Football, sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Washington has run 21 plays, and their biggest of the game comes right now on fourth and one. And they're going to kick it, Jason. I mean, I know the analytics guys would probably say you've got to go for it, but I think Kalen DeBoer says, nope, in this building, I, I wouldn't mind going up seven against these Ducks. I think there's a case for and against this decision, but I get it. Your defense did get a win by holding them to a field goal. Now you trade kicks. And we'll see how it plays in the long run with 45 minutes to go. And that didn't look very good. It was a false start by the kicker. Looked like it. False start. The 47 of the offense. Simulating motion at the start of the set. The five yard penalty was still fourth down. He did simulate motion by moving. Yeah, and I don't, that face by Kalen DeBoer tells me. <laughs> But I don't think he was trying to draw them off sides with a kicker flinch. I, I don't think that's in the playbook. These are inventive play callers. That's unlikely. Peyton 
Henry, who won the game last week against Oregon State, his first ever game winner. Slices this one right on through. Well, he almost looked early there, too. There is a marker down. Let's see. Offside. Well, one of the defense was in the neutral zone at the snap. It's a five yard penalty to still fourth down. Well, now, wait. Is Washington going to take the penalty? I don't believe, I don't know that they asked. Because if Washington takes this penalty, you're back to fourth and one, and then you might go for it. Well, that offense is huddling up right now, having that conversation. And Kalen DeBoer is talking undoubtedly to Ryan Grubb, his OC up in the booth of what you want to do here. Washington has declined the penalty. The result, the field goal is good. The get back guy for somebody else. Hey, you're not you're not going anywhere. No, I think that there's a lot of conversation there of what we want to do here and to your point. And I think because you're on the road. And frankly, if the Beavers done that a week ago in Seattle and taking the field goals and taking the field goals on the road instead of going for it, that could have been a different outcome. My counterpoint to that is you did say, and we both believe that the offenses are going to be able to get up and down the field in this game. That's true. And Kalen said, we're going to be aggressive. Dan Lanning said, we're going to be aggressive. But I think you also want to pay off points. That's another drive. That's another brilliant drive of excellent execution against Lanning's guys. And instead of walking away with a zero, you walk away with three, up seven now. It's an interesting junction point early on against an Oregon team that has not lost since the opener against the Georgia Bulldogs. Certainly in the college football playoff conversation, the Oregon Ducks as Hudson on a line drive kick has an opportunity to return. He finds his way to the hash mark, keeps his feet to the outside, and once again is right around the 35-yard line. So if you haven't seen the Oregon Ducks and how they've flown since that Georgia game, come with us to Duckland when you just waddle along toward the door. Oh, no, no. That's, that's terrifying, by the way. That duck uh, got a face full of bulldog. Then they win eight straight games, 40-plus points in every game. You see a Skyrider put it up there for you. And it's just beautiful, halcyon living on the duck pond right now. Yeah, and they love playing here. I mean, done on the road, a couple of little tougher contests away from home, but for the Ducks, yeah, looks like he's got all his feathers restored from the Bulldogs. Well, it looked like he was showing that cameraman what he looked like in the cartoon, which is a beautiful bit of synergy. Noah Whittington on the run turns his back and gets about six on first down. 23 in a row here, right? 23 wins in a row at Autzen Stadium. Since a loss to Stanford that they were up 10 in, in 2018. That's Whittington in motion. And Nix rolling with it to launch it down the sideline. Bo Nix and Dante Fortin couldn't come back. That's the freshman green on the coverage. It was, and I'm a little surprised that Bo did not take the flat. You're going to see the flat come wide open. He's got a choice here. Do I want to throw it in the flat to Whittington? An easy first down. Instead, he takes the shot. He's picking on the true freshman, but it's underthrown. And throwing outside the numbers is not the strength of Bo Nix. In fact, throwing outside the numbers are 116th in college football. They just don't do it much. He turned down a first down. Yeah, throw throwing the flat now critical third and four. Well, the seam has been their domain so far this year. Whittington the back got to snap it. It is Whittington. And he swimming through for a first down for Oregon. Yeah, we have seen these ducks a bunch. And while Bo Nix gets a lion's share of the credit, it's the guys up front. Just look at the, it's like a Velcro, a body on a body, and then these running backs are no nonsense. They're like point guards in basketball that just go right down the middle of the court, and they trust the big boys up front. Amuvai Laulu, Harper, Forsyth, an excellent job on that third down conversion. Nix off the motion. Look to his left. 
Has time, now loads up, and he has to sidewind it out of bounds. The question is, is that a forward pass for Bo Nix? Looks like they're going to call it a forward pass. Well, I think that is right down the line, but once again, pretty good coverage on the back end here. You can see Asa Turner, Alex Cook, the two safeties would be put in a bind today. Oh, he may have had Franklin over the top of all of it. He was not looking there again. He loves to feast in the middle of the field. They take that away, and he's got to throw it away. And the pressure is forcing his eyes to move, unlike we've seen on tape much of this season since that Georgia game. Bucky Irving back in, a little dodge outside. Irving breaks another tackle, cuts it back inside, and just slices through for a first down. Yeah, you're just going to see what he's done all season long. Eighth in the country over four yards after contact, and that's not good enough right there. And that's not good enough right there. And you have got to bring force. You can't stick an arm out. You can't just try to grab cloth. You have to go through these backs if you're the Huskies. After the 21-yard run for Irving, it's Whittington on a short gain. Allison downstairs. Well, keep in mind, guys, Jordan Perryman, the cornerback for Washington, is still out of this game. He left the field with what looked like a shoulder injury. It looks like they put some sort of brace on his left shoulder. I've been watching him. He's testing out his range of motion. But he remains on the sideline, fully suited. And I would imagine they're just holding out. Hope he can give them something because they are so thin at that position. Now, who'd they say their third or fourth corner was? You. That's bad news. That's real bad news. At least it wasn't me. Second down and eight. That'd be worse. That, thank you. Next to throw. Little pat of the ball. He got it away. And it's Hudson breaking a tackle. Washington has not secured those highlighter colored jerseys at a first down. That time it is Asa Turner, and that's already half a dozen missed tackles on this drive. A group that averages 12 missed tackles a game, the guys in purple. And give some credit to Irving, to Whittington, to Hudson. They are slippery, powerful, and explosive. That's Whittington in motion. Next loves to run in the red zone. And a little hop through to the nine. He loves to run. They love to utilize their tight ends. Ten touchdown receptions by their tight ends. That's four more than their wide receivers. So they love to use those big body matchups, be it Montevall, McCormick, Ferguson, even Herbert with the touchdown. All four of those tight ends. Very active as you see them get into two tight end set. That's Ferguson and Montevall. Nix again. Bo Nix out of bounds. About a yard short of the line to gain. Oh, they are going to give him the first down there. That looks like a little bit of a generous spot. It'll be first and goal for Oregon. 13 rushing touchdowns for Nix. He just gets more and more comfortable the closer they get to that in line. And there's been an awful lot of creativity down here as well. 36 touchdowns to his name so far and see if replay has stopped this. The previous ruling of the quarterback making the line to gain is being reviewed. See where the foot ends up out of bounds and where the ball is at the time. He's carrying the ball in his left hand. He's out of bounds there. I think that that ball First, his right foot hits out of bounds. The ball is going to be short of that three-yard line. I thought so real time. It's not an easy call for the official. Yeah, I, where that right foot hits. Dean Blandino is with us. Dean, what are you seeing? That last shot is the best look. Nix's right foot is going to hit the sideline. The ball is short of the three-yard line. At that point, if I'm looking at this in replay, I'm going to move the ball back probably just beyond the four-yard line, and it's going to bring up a third down. Thank you, Dean. Good job by the replay booth to buzz down. You didn't really 
want to rush that if you're Oregon, but sometimes it can be advantageous. After the play, the runner was short of the line of the game by a half a yard. It'll be third down at the three and a half yard line. That's exactly the efficiency at which replays should work. That's yep. a very nice job by Jerry and Rich in the replay booth, and Kenny Dillingham has to call a third down play now. And we know what he likes to do more than anybody in college football, and that's where the QB sneak. Whether that's in traditionally in the A gaps, you'll see Bo Nix bounce it out to the to the C gaps as well. Go up and down the line of scrimmage. And a ton of confidence in that play. Maybe as much as anything they do. You see, 94 is in there as well. That's Josh Cotterly Jr. who caught a touchdown. The offensive lineman caught a touchdown on his birthday last week in Boulder. He has been a tackle eligible for them. And he's the one standing under center. Now Nix is in motion. And everybody's moving. Two to snap it. And it's a fumbled snap. Ball is on the ground. And the Washington Huskies are on top of it. Tuputala runs away with the football. And all that motion, all the creativity, finally burns the Oregon Ducks. Just their eighth turnover the year their first lost fumble all season in the red zone no less in touchdown right here you can see the lane opening up it's going to be a walk-in Whittington knows it but just never comfortable and that play a little indicative and these Oregon fans know it of just how uncomfortable their offense at times has been tonight by contrast how smooth it's been the last eight games that is a thunderous end zone Penix is standing in and there's some movement at the line that Oregon conveniently points out to the officials false start 37 on the offense that will be enforced half the distance to the ball is still first down Memorial Stadium in Lincoln the horseshoe in Columbus and right here for yours truly the three that were the most deafening in all of college football. And they do just get it out of the end zone with Davis. He's right back at the line of scrimmage as his crowd will build again. from the end zone to the sideline and Jalen Polk reaches out with a beautiful snag and he's the third weapon it's a dune one it's McMillan two but a ton of confidence with Penix and Polk this year as well can't put in a better spot Christian Gonzalez is all over it's a terrific break there's one spot to hit he hits it and Polk growls it Surgical so far from Penix. Third and one. It's a run. It's Davis, and he's going to be very close. Really close, and it looks like short. Jeffrey Bassa got the hit. Yeah, it was Funa low. It was Bassa high. And the shortest of all the conversions. The Ducks finally get a huge stop. You can see Funa collapse Colt. Bossa heads up, doesn't hesitate. They couldn't get off on third and 14, couldn't get off on third and 10, but get off the field most critically on third and one. What a sensation in this stadium. The play clock on the screen has led to a whistle. Did they reset it is the question. First time out of the half. Oregon. It's a timeout, Oregon. Timeout on the field. 
tell you what, this feels like one of those games that's going to have some sort of weird ending. Emotion on 10 right now. Jack McAllister back to boot it. Josh Delgado to receive for Oregon, trying to flip the field here. And that is a line drive that Delgado catches across midfield. And we'll take a look at our Heisman watch, Brock Heward. It's brought to you by Nissan. Entering today, how do you size this thing up? Well, a bunch of them all padded their stats. He did, he did, he did. Bo, I now, this is the most inefficient half of the season since Georgia. He's getting after it in Fort Worth tonight as well. It is wide open. I think after last week with, with Hooker and Stroud both struggling a little bit, these last couple weeks of the, uh, of the season are going to make the decision for the Heisman voters. So Nissan Heisman Watch, Nissan premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Thornton in motion, Bucky Irving off a block from Ferguson again. Shoulder contact and again a shattered tackle by Bucky Irving. Yeah, you just can't tackle these guys. I mean, you have to, you have to bring your feet. I mean, you just cannot throw your body or an arm. Irving has proven this time and again this season. Excellent pin and pull. You see Ferguson get out in front of it as well. But boy, we're up to almost double-digit missed tackles in the first half. Irving finally taken down on first contact. That time, Asa Turner went low, and it's second down. Now let's see of Oregon, right? Two drives right down the field, and hands to the face. Took them out of a scoring situation in the red zone the first time. A fumble at the one foot line. Let's see if Kenny Dillingham, with a little encouragement from that line, says, Pound the football. See those very wide splits again. The two receivers at the very top of the screen. And it is Pound the football for Oregon and Bucky Irving, who did have the first down. He ran into Ale. Under seven to go already in the second quarter, 10 to three. I think you've got a tremendous advantage for Oregon at the point of attack. You do? I, I do. Just watching the tape this season, the numbers don't tell that whole story. The Huskies actually pretty good in rush defense on paper, second in the conference, but not a lot of depth in the interior of that defensive line, and that area is a strength of attacking for these Ducks. Yeah, it's Irving running laterally and then turning it upfield. Finally thrown down by Cook high and Maul low in second down. I will tell you this, talking to William Inge, the D coordinator, co-D coordinator of the Huskies on the field before the game. And he said, listen, we need to make these guys earn it. In this building, it's been explosive play after explosive play. The former Iowa Hawkeye knows something about defense, knows something about keeping things in front of you and making that opponent drive the length of the field and earn every yard. He said to us, you can't allow a two-yard gain to become a 25-yard gain, and the broken tackles this drive have been a problem. It's Whittington sliced down again by that same man, Christopher Mole, and it's third down. It was Mole, but it was Martin who made the play. These edges, Trice and Martin, two best defensive players. Cook's on that list as well, the leading tackler, but a good job on the edge there, allowing Mole to flow and set up a third down. How about this drive, though? Run, 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 run. Mm -hmm. Five in a row. 17 to seven run to pass so far in the game. Third and six for Bonix. Feeling the pressure again. He got away from Martin. Turns it up. Washington got there with the end, Martin, but couldn't finish. This is the key. It's right here, and you cannot rush past Bo Nix. You just cannot do it. You beat the tackle right there. You have to slow down. You have to continue to constrict the pocket because the minute Nix feels that space, like DTR, like Delora, he's going to expose it. Whittington into a bear hug, and nothing there. Second down coming up. Third trip in the red zone. 
Can Oregon finally execute? Use those tight ends. Use the weapons. Use Bo Nix's legs like they've done all season long. Nobody runs more plays in the red zone than the Oregon offense this year in college football. It's a run straight ahead. Oh, he had it the whole way. He couldn't get the ball fast enough, Brock. Well, you spread him sideline to sideline, and you can see that right here. I mean, Tom Brady loves to goose sneak. Even at 44 years of age, that's out of the shotgun, but in essence, that's a QB sneak. Forsyth gets a body. Bo Nix makes one man miss. 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Pays off a drive that was eight consecutive runs. Extra play is good for Camden Lewis. Washington has done just about everything right, but Oregon has hung around, and now suddenly in Chili Autzen, we're tied. It was an onside kick that got them some energy against UCLA. This time, Alexander flops on it for Washington. I'll tell you what, you're going to see this right here. It looks like I know why they attempt this. Right? They watched it earlier. They've seen it on tape. You see a backwards move, but the ball just bounced a little further than it did against UCLA. Washington specifically said to us, we saw that onside kick against UCLA. We're ready for anything. And there, Alexander with a clean catch in a big spot. Oregon assuming they'll see the ball again. Penix loads up a throw, and this is snatched away. Gonzalez fighting for it. Let's see who ends up with the ball. McMillan comes away with it. Oh, my goodness. He wrestled it away from Gonzalez. And the Huskies hustling to the line, trying to get a play called quickly. And Washington doesn't want to mess around with replay. They're going to run a play, and it's Talapapa. That is really wow. close, Brock. <laughs> what strength by McMillan, though. Unbelievable fight because Gonzalez has it first. He's got it right there, and they fight. Oh, boy. He pulls it away eventually with those strong hands. Question you'd have if you're Oregon is, was Gonzalez down Correct. with possession of the ball? Second down and nine for Washington. Panic steps up. Michael Panic. It's a couple of yards. Dean Blandino, you're watching that play. What do you see? Yeah, I mean, that was so close. And I think based on this last replay, I do think it is a catch. They're both going to the ground. They've got to maintain that control. The ball does not touch the ground. And it's going to be McMillan that pulls that ball out. Yep. But that was really close. I do think replay probably should have stopped it and taken a second look. Don't think Gonzalez ever had full possession. Of I think you're right on that. Dean, thank you very much. It sets up a third down and four. For Washington. And a timeout for Michael Penix Jr. So much tension in this game right now. Look is an out of body experience. What Jalen McMillan is talking about is a near interception that he took away as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life creating financial security for more than 150 years. Tightly played so far. Oregon's pass offense has been quiet. The Ducks just went in, tried an onside kick, and now third down Washington. It's louder than a moment ago. Panix on third down. Lost it. Caught Davis. And Gonzalez side swipes it. 
Well, you just feel the difference in the tackling for these Ducks, don't you? Mm-hmm. Bennett's been beautiful. He's thrown some great passes. But when it's come down here to the red zone, you've seen Funa, you've seen Bassa, you see Gonzalez. They're not missing tackles. Like the guys in purple have done too many times in the first half. Peyton Henry from 27. And the field goal is good. And you have to imagine part of the calculus from Dan Lanning on the onside kick was we're going to see the ball again and the Ducks see the ball out of the half as well. Well, it, it paid huge dividends. And the numbers tell you this is the best team in college football in the Power Five. Four minutes before half, four minutes out of half. That critical juncture. We were here against UCLA where that onside kick before the weather turned the game. And the Bruins were digging out of a hole all game long. You've seen Kalen DeBoer here now twice. Go against some of the new age book. But I, I honestly don't mind it on the road. Because you continue to put points on that on that scoreboard here. I will also say fourth down at four is different than fourth and one. So you could argue maybe you should have gone for it the first time and then not the second time. However, Washington has the lead against one of the best teams in the country. This phase right here has been a huge difference. The hidden yards that the Ducks have gained and kickoff returns twice and a short punt that proved valuable. Hudson has made his way to about the 35-yard line. This will be a fair catch for dollars, so they'll start from the 25. The countdown is on because the World Cup is just eight days away. Monday, the 21st, Christian Pulisic and the U.S. men's national team play their long-awaited opener against Wales. And you could win $1 million. Fill out your World Cup bracket at foxsports.com backslash bracket and play for free. Most of these teams, 7-2, and 8-1, and one, and good teams have tendencies. And the tendency will tell you right now, especially in this situation here, the middle of the field. We've not seen a ton of seams, deep overs, posts, where they have been one of the best in the power five. This area of the field, right here, right in the middle, not outside the numbers, right between those hashes is where they love to attack. Empty on first down. It's a jump pass for Nix, and he just spikes it short of Irving. The girl was in the area of the pass. And Bo had a receiver coming into that middle of the field. It's a couple occasions. And Jason, your eyes saw it on the first snap. Bo Nix has been comfortable running it, but these ends in that pocket have been a whole lot tighter than any other game in Eugene this season. Do you think it's just the sense of those ends closing in? I think it's the rivalry. I think it's the emotion, and it's absolutely the feel of those big bodies. Nix with his feet set. He's got Ferguson, the tight end. It was tackled by Bright. It'll be third down and a couple. Oregon has two timeouts remaining. We'll see if Washington uses one as well. There's a marker down at the end of the play. Ineligible player downfield. Number 71 on the offense on the pass across the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty is still second down. The right tackle, Amuvai Laulu. And that's the right call. The big man is four yards plus when that ball is released. That's a hard call for these officials. Dean Blandino will tell you that's one that often comes late because it's difficult to see in real time. But on replay, the correct call. Second and 15. Nix down the middle, it's Hudson, and down he goes. So third down coming up. So does Washington take that time out here? Does Oregon play a game of chicken right here? This is really right in the middle, you know? Do you run a play quickly? Kind of surprised Washington doesn't use the timeout here. They're forcing Oregon's hand a little bit here. That said, if you're going to take the field goals earlier in the half, you probably don't play it a little bit more reckless with that timeout. Next to throw, he does have a completion for Irvin, who shakes by one. And now do you use the timeout, or do you just take this thing to halftime? I take it here. And there it is. Final timeout of the half. 
Washington for 30 seconds in duration. Coming up at the half, stay tuned. Mike Hill, Emmanuel Acho, Chris Peterson in the State Farm halftime show. Here's some of the stories they'll be covering. No points in quarter number one for Texas TCU. Bryce Young, a tremendous game on the road in the SEC in the Heisman discussion. But look, the discussion's on the sideline. Fascinating. Yeah. Will Oregon go here? Does Oregon have the guts right now, fourth and two, to say, you know what? I just tried an onside kick. We're going to get the ball to begin the second half. Washington burned their last time out. Are they hyper aggressive and try to go here against William Inge's crew? My question to you would be what's the risk reward for well, Oregon? Well, their punt team struggles. I think they're on their third punter this season as well. Bo Nix on the field. He's punted a couple of times as well, so that's a possibility here too. Got to watch hard count. Try to get a free five to move those chains as well. Both of these staffs have discussed third down, basically a second down this week. It's fourth down and two for Oregon. They can try to hard count. There it is. They're going to tight end flowing the other way now. If they do snap it anyway, the answer is yes! Wow! wow. <laughs> he is really close. I and can't believe they did that. I can't either. When your O-line is sitting that long on a sneak as well, holy smokes. Dan Lanning's been so good in decision making. Watch Second this. Time the and this is a fourth to one, but once again, there is that sneak. The Bo Nix has been so effective this season. He just feels space. What an enormous risk. If you don't get it, you hand the ball to the Huskies. Kenny Dillingham does at the 35 yard line with an extra possession before halftime. And now, because you risked that, right? Because so many chips were on the felt there, don't you have to take a shot now? Well, you still got the one timeout, so you absolutely still have plenty here. You're working for just a field goal. I think Kalen DeBoer is wondering if they're going to measure. Is there any spot that's close? I don't think they do. I think he had the first down. I think DeBoer, like me, couldn't believe they snapped that after sitting at the line for 30 seconds. You just never see that, Brock. Rivalry. A thrill a minute. Oregon and Washington. There's the shot. Bo Nix, middle of the field, incomplete for Franklin. That kid can go. He splits this. He's going to run, excuse me, he's inside, right the middle of the field. He is going to run right past the safety. Alex Cook is sprinting, but he's beaten. And we saw that dime for six against UCLA. That one just a yard and a half off. Troy knows it. He was very aware of the steps he had on Cook. Those safeties will stay a little deeper. You think maybe? But if they do, that opens up the middle of the field, and you still have a timeout left, too. Next. Drops it off. Irving slides by one. Bucky Irving out of bounds at the 42 with 15 seconds to go in the half. At some point, Washington's going to have to learn in tackling Bucky Irving, you have to come under control. I mean, you, he, he is one of the best in all of college football at breaking tackles, and he's showing it tonight. Tremendous balance. And you've got to come in under a whole lot more, more control than we have this first half. Nick's rolling and throwing, and there he is again. Irving gets knocked out of bounds by Hampton. Eight seconds to go. One timeout still remaining in the half for Oregon. Dan Lanning showed early this year against BYU, our first trip in here, that he was going to be willing to go for it on fourth down in his own territory. 
he did it deep in his own territory here to save a possession. Field goal range is somewhere in that vicinity around the 30-yard line with wide open space here at Austin Stadium. Where does Nick's attack? The answer is to the sideline. It's Franklin out of bounds. And now at least you have a crack at it. Lewis is long this season, just 44. Out of bounds with the Husky, 36. Oregon would have loved to have maybe three or four more yards here. But here is Camden Lewis. Typically these longer kicks for one that doesn't do a whole bunch of them. They'll try to drive it, see if those Huskies can get their hands up. From 54 for Lewis. It's on the way, and Lewis left it short. This is no good. On the Huskies. It was a game of mousetrap to get to the this end of the, the first end of the half. 13-10 Washington. Now to Mike Hill, Emmanuel Acho, Chris Peterson in Los Angeles, the State Farm Halftime Show, guys. All right, fellas, uh, welcome to the State Farm Halftime Show in L.A. Mike Hill, that is Coach Chris Peterson and Matthew Acho right there. I know what you're thinking already. Uh, Oregon, you know, they got the number two scoring offense in the nation since week one at over 45 points a game. Held the 10 points in that first half. Give credit to the Washington defense, but you're also saying Oregon is kind of kicking themselves uh, in the you-know-what as we take a look at the State Farm Halftime Highlights. Oregon, kiss, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. That's the saying that coaches say. No need to get fancy. I understand you've done it before, but your quarterback is juiced up. Of course something might go wrong when you get fancy. Oregon is playing this game as though they're on the road and as though they're not the better team. Coach, you know to just keep it simple. I believe that Dan Lanning has sacrificed 10 points in this game. I believe that cost them points, mm -hmm. and I believe that surprise onside kick gave Washington points. It's taken Washington five minutes on both of their drives to get points outside of that onside kick. Give a team the ball at the 50, they're so, bound to get some points. What you think of the fourth and two on the on 33 with under a minute to play? The reason I didn't <laughs> like the fourth and two is because risk reward. Okay. If you don't get it, once again, Washington field goal position. If you do get it, you still have to miraculously go 70 yards to get points or another 40 yards to get three points. I don't like how Oregon is calling this game. I do believe they're the better team. Quarterback Bo Nix is doing a phenomenal job with his legs. But coach, the coaching, you got to make sense of that for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I like how Washington's calling their side oh, of the yeah, game. Okay. <laughs> of course you do. I, I'm really uh, impressed with the balance mm -hmm. of the Washington offense. Usually it's a pass first. We're going to win by throwing the ball. But they've run the ball 14 times, passed it for 14 times. They've run it for 81 yards and passed it for 126 yards. I love the balance. Now, what I do think is Washington's going to come out throwing it a bunch. That's what they do well. That's how they score points. I've said this before. If Washington can hold these guys under 40 points, they're going to have a great chance to win. And only holding them to 10 at half, I like their chances. All right, three-point game. Oregon, as you heard the announcers say, they do get the second-half kickoff. Tonight, don't downstairs. What do you make of what we saw in 30 minutes? Uh, emotion and rivalry. Yeah. I mean, it just it brings out a different kind of game than anybody expected. Expected this to be high-scoring. Ducks struggle in the red zone on a couple occasions. Michael Penix comes out on fire. He's used his legs a little bit more tonight, Jason, than he has in the past. That rocket arm is electric. It's alive. You had a sense that he would be poised in this venue with all the experience he's banked this over his five years, and he has been. On the flip side, Bucky Irving has been impossible to tackle. Nine missed tackles for the Huskies in that first half. And that O-line for Oregon, we have seen them a number of times. Once they get a body on on a body, whether it's Irving, Whittington, Bo Nix on the touchdown run, it's been 21 runs, just 14 passes for the Ducks in that first half. And this is not going to be a great start for Washington. They tried to kick it away from Hudson, who has been outstanding. And we go downstairs to Allison. Well, guys, I talked to Dan Lanning about the balance he's seen from that Washington offense. And he said he's definitely stood out to him. They need to do a better job on the third and short situations. And also, when they get a chance to get Michael Penix to the ground, they have to get him down. They can't let him hurt, him, hurt them with his feet. Now, offensively at the line of scrimmage for Oregon, he said they've seen Washington just really getting off the ball fast. They're rushing upfield. 
and been aggressive in the passing game, which has allowed them, you know, to hit some of those run plays then. So they'll have to continue to do that in the second half. He said they also need to start maybe varying their cadence a little bit here at the line of scrimmage. Irving on a first down run eventually crawls to the 40 yard line. Bonex 9 for 14 in the first half. But no damage really down the field. You can see that. He missed a couple opportunities. They're not a big intermediate team. It's kind of what they do. Lots of plays at the line of scrimmage. Maybe not as many screens as normal tonight. I'll be curious if. And Dillingham starts to throw a few of those to just get Bonex a little more comfortable in the passing game. And a whistle before he can peel away. It's a false start. False start. 71 of the offense. This is a five yard penalty. Still, second down. It's hard to turn on Oregon tape and not see the screen. Brock. It's such a huge facet of what they do because a big lineman like Amuvai Laulu and his athleticism. But I'll tell you, Nix in that first half felt these ends. These two tackles felt Trice and Martin. One of the better tandems on the West Coast. They're going to run it. It is Nix, and he goes crashing down with Asa Turner. Third down. Bucky Irving on the run there. Third down for the Ducks. 23 runs to just 14 passes. I think you see the point of emphasis in the matchup they want to attack. That touchdown drive was eight straight runs. Next takes off right down the zipper of the defense, and he slip and slides his way basically to Redmond or something. Well, it's this little motion in the backfield, right? And it just moves those linebackers. Irving, it's subtle. But that little motion took the eyes of the linebackers and took them out of the box. That was just eerily similar for the Huskies to the touchdown run of Bo Nix earlier. The ends were coming. Nick snaps it off. Middle of the field. There it is. Dante Thornton. Well, those ends in that D line that have been suffocating in the pocket, they get there again. The tandem of Trice and Martin, but this time Bo stands strong. You get the matchup you want. Your stud fast receiver on the nickelback for the first touchdown of the season for Thornton. Kenny Dillingham said to us that Dante Thornton is a big play waiting to happen. He said super explosive in our meeting yesterday. And there was that ball down the middle that you were referring to right out of halftime. It's a view. Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Dante Thornton was just talking to Bo Nix over on the sideline, and Nix said to him, That's my boy. <laughs> He can get up and go. I mean, he, you, we saw it in the first half. Troy Franklin ran behind this defense, just missed. Thornton at six foot five out of Baltimore, Maryland, from coast to coast. Could not draw up a better drive for Bo Nix. Get him comfortable, get him running. Sometimes QBs just need to get hit a little bit to set up that pass. I think he, in particular, uh, that was another dime from the heavens. Washington's first chance here in the second half. That kick ends up out of bounds as well. It's up with these kickers. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball replaced at the 35-yard line. First and ten. Downstairs, Allison. 
with Kaylin DeBoer at the half Washington head coach really pleased just with how sound and consistent his team was in that first half he said they got off to a fast start offensively because they were able to execute at a high level not get behind the change as far as the game management and kicking those field goals he said it continues to just be trying to find that balance between not settling but also not taking any crazy chances there's certainly Bruce something he said to being able to just get that lead on the road and take control of the game a little bit yeah Allison I think it just tries to put the pressure on that opponent but the challenge is you give up an explosive the challenge is you come out of halftime and now you've reignited these fans and this is a critical critical drive for Michael Penix and company Penix scanning fires got McMillan down the sideline and he tiptoes out of bounds you know it's interesting because you've shut down Oregon generally but how long can you do it if you're watching well what they did beautifully in that first half remember too is they maximize this play clock they ate up possessions now we have two linemen and a quarterback and receivers everywhere it is Penix on the roll and throw and that was as beautiful of a play as it looked from the start. Well, that was no bueno. Started three for three on third downs, then 0 for three. You take that shot on third and one. I don't think Kalen DeBoer, that's the way they repped it during practice, but this becomes a must. Oregon scheduled to get Jamal Hill back after the targeting penalty last week. He has not been on the field yet. In this first Washington drive to safety. Out of the shotgun, it is a run for Davis, and he does have a spinning first down. Well, that looked a little bit like Bucky Irving running through tackles, just not going to be denied. This is one of the worst running back crews in college football, breaking tackles. Just .13 broken tackle per carry. By that time, you could see a different intensity from Cam Davis. An arm tackle was not going to stop him. Davis, who made his collegiate debut against Oregon, as Hill does hit the field. The safety back there at the top of the formation at the 36. Penix to throw a little bit high, and Adunze rescues it in front of Dante Manning. Well, this receiver team is pretty special. Jamal Hill back in the game. You know he's got fresh legs, and he's going to try to help in this coverage against the Adunzes in the McMillans. And any ball in their territory seems to go their way. It's a first down run for Talapapa and Washington. Here's Jamal Hill and talking to his two corners, Bridges and Gonzalez. He said he's usually really fired up, and he's just going to be extra fired up on a half. Time. He is just steady, steady and force back there. Play it. Quite a bit of personnel. The Ducks rotating guys in and out. Dunze in motion, play action to him. It's a throw, it's a Dunze coming across the formation and pushed out of bounds by Gonzalez. Gain a two. Ball comes out of Penix's hand in a hurry. We've seen some elite throwers this year, Jason. I don't know as far as just arm angles. If there's any that create the amount of velocity, from different arm angles the way the Michael Penix can. Upper body too, right? It just, it's just effortless. Second and eight run, Talapapa gets to the fringe and that is a first down Washington. Nice job there by Taj Davis, the receiver. You're going to see him come from the right side in help blocks right there. The safety after securing the edge. As Allison said, tremendous balance in that first half. 14 runs, 14 passes for the number one passing team in the country. That kind of balance makes it difficult to defend. and goal for Washington because of Westover the tight end. This is uh, 
DJ Johnson and he can run and he's six foot six and Penix knows right where he's at and he's got to throw that heater on the outside corner past his fingertips. Just painted him. Brandon Dorless, the injured player, and watch him again coming inside from the end spot. Rolled over Sewell there. Dorless frustrated. We'll check on him when we come back. Sponsored by Progressive. One thing no one would ever challenge, protecting your home and car with Progressive. And by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Washington had lost 12 in a row in the series until that Jake Browning led 70 to 21 win. Washington tried to hurt Oregon's opportunity to make the college football playoff. Brandon Dorless off the field. He limped off the field during the break, and it's first and goal Washington. Fourth trip in the red zone. Already settled for two field goals. Davis. Penix had to stretch. And Davis is shuttled backward by Jeffrey Bassa. Yeah, at some point, that's got to flip if they're going to pull off an upset. Dunze one on one to the top of the field. It's a run again. It's Davis lurching forward. He lost the football. Was he over is the question, and the answer is yes. It's a touchdown, Washington. Looks like a touchdown to yep. me, Brock. Pretty close with that right elbow, but it just has to break the plane. That's now 11 rushing touchdowns in every single one of them this year in the red zone for Davis. He scores a touchdown oh, every touchdown. eight carries. That was his eighth carry. They're going to review it. The ruling on the field is touchdown, so you'd need clear and convincing proof that it wasn't a touchdown to overturn. The leg drive and the power. It's just the left elbow's down there. Does the ball break the plane, Dean Blandino? Are you seeing any look here to overturn the call on the field? Not yet, Brock. We're looking for body part other than a hand or foot, so it's going to be, looks like that left knee that may hit first. Now we have to piece a couple of angles together, which they can do in the replay booth. One angle shows the knee, the other angle shows the ball on the goal line. Piece those together and maybe get a definitive look. To me, right now, this has to stand. We're all in agreement here, Dean. Thank you for distilling that. Here's the look at the knee. I think the knee, the right elbow, I think the ball has crossed the plane. Both offenses, I think, got some messaging at halftime. <laughs> you think maybe? Yeah, just to go finish and to go play to your strengths. After reviewing the play, the touchdown is confirmed. They confirm it in the replay booth. And Cameron Davis and Bo Nix are the most likely runners in the country to score a touchdown when they have the ball based on percentages. And so far tonight, we have seen them both score so far. extra point. Is good. Didn't figure this would be a low scoring game forever and the offense as you said have found the end zone each of Much he wanted it. I actually had to get him back into the bench area because he was jumping around, waving his arms, firing up the crowd. They had to get him back into the area so they could kick the extra point. And after they did, he returned in front of that student section, waving for them to make some noise. That's about as big as a celebration, emotion, fiery of Bo Nix as I've seen here, guys. He told us yesterday that he got scored on as a sophomore in high school. He was playing defensive back, got scored on. Was so mad about it, so competitive. 
he ran the ball the next play from scrimmage and just zigzagged through everybody for like a 75-yard touchdown. He is a highly competitive young man and did not like, very clearly did not like his first half. Bucky Irving upright and trucking through Huskies across the 40-yard line. Well, that's missed tackle number 10, missed tackle number 11, and at some point they're not missed tackles. They're forced broken tackles by the strength of Irving. You're on the spot right there. That's Powell, the corner, ducks his head. And Irving, as he's done all season long, runs right through those arms. Slide step through for a gain of three. He breaks about one tackle per two runs. You know, and the key is you want to put your running back on corners. If the O-line is doing their job, receivers doing their job, go block the safety, go block the big people, and then allow these dynamic running backs to take their chances on any corner. We saw a scan of that offensive line that has played so well together, only allowing the one sack all year, and they dispute that as a sack even. There's the quick release by Nix for Hudson. He breaks to the outside, and Hudson gets spiked down hard by Green, the freshman. But we've not seen as much screen game tonight, and you may see that here in the second half, especially if you get numbers like that. Three on three, you again will take your chances. That time, Asa Turner is left the field turn. Well, you watch that Colorado game and charted how quickly Bo Nix got the ball out of his hand. Irving to Nix. That's a backward pass. He's able to throw it forward, and he does. That's Franklin on the fringe, dancing across the 35. Just a little more creativity for 16, a little bit more confidence as Eula Foscio runs off the field, hoping to get him 15 to 20 snaps tonight. But now you're feeling the number two offense in America. And this is a lot more like rhythm-wise, tempo-wise, urgency-wise of what you've seen over the course of the season. And it has been a cleaner pocket for Bonex, a quicker release for Bonex here in the second half. Whittington. A driving run to the 29. But this is what Washington has to do. A nice tackle there by Bright. You've got to make Oregon earn it. And they've done that. Other than the explosive play to Thornton, they have basically made Oregon, hey, it's four, it's five, it's six. But you're going to have to possess the ball. Not too many freebies. Lots of broken tackles. But that was the plan tonight. Make them drive at the length of the field. Franklin down at the bottom with Green, the freshman. It's another run. It's Whittington. Pinballing outside. Touchdown. I know we're not supposed to have favorite players, but Alex Forsythe, the center for Oregon, may just be that for me in college football. He is the grown man. He's the sixth-year captain who's been through so much in his life. The guys love him. The team follows him. And that time, Whittington ran right behind him for six. Dan Lanning had his video team take video of Alex Forsythe around the facility when he didn't know it was happening, when he was just practicing, getting ready, taking reps, that uncommon sort of care for the details. He wanted to show what you do when you don't think you're being watched. And everybody's watching Whittington, but Forsyth did the trick. The Honor U.S. Vets campaign. Visit usvets.org slash box forward to learn how you can help end veteran homelessness. Tremendous cause. We at Fox Sports are part of this year. Touchdowns galore in the second half so far. Three straight drives have ended in touchdowns. Number six, Oregon, has the lead once more, and this kick is laced.
missed just through the end zone for a touchback. Back to the touchdown. Okay, a couple things. I, I've not seen a center do what Alex Forsyth does when he snaps the ball, and look how quickly he's already into the D-lineman before the ball is even in the hands of Whittington. That's awesome. Now look at the feet of Whittington. Right, they do all of these bag drills. Running backs love to do these drills. Cut, cut, cut. Look at the feet of Whittington in the hole. See you later. Over 200 yards rushing. The Ducks on their way, I think, to a 300-yard rushing now. The crowd has been a constant tonight at Autzen Stadium. Tamapapa breaks it down and gets hit. Well, Justin Flo's pretty excited. Shocker. <laughs> I think he has passion when he just walks on the field. He is, what do they call him, Heme Monster? He calls himself that, the Heme Monster. Yeah. His teammates say that it's 7 in the morning and it's cold outside and they're practicing and he's the guy out there screaming. Oh, linebackers. <laughs> Different breeds. They say that about quarterbacks as well. That's the first tackle for loss for Oregon today. With Brandon Dorless back in on the line. Penix on course, middle of the field, on the hands of Polk, and he is out of here. There's a marker down back at the 14, and it looks like it's on the hit of Penix. The play is a touchdown. Personal foul. Weapon the passer. The defense. Finally, we do force on the kickoff. Oh, okay. uh, well, there's the heme monster who's screaming. He's screaming unblocked here, and he has the QB in his sights. They protect quarterbacks. That's just a tad late, but how about Penix? He doesn't even flinch. He says he monster that. That's a throw right there. That was ridiculous. Polk's been through such injury history. And he is feeling every bit of the excitement of 76 yards. This was 55 yards in the air, Jason, on a dot. With a blitzing madman in your face, and you know you're going to get that little kiss, and you couldn't have laid it out there better. And once again, we've seen now both big plays have come from what? These coordinators, Ryan Grubb in that case, put a receiver on a safety, just like Thornton was on the nickelback. So you get those matchups. You set up formations so you can get the matchup to feast. And we got ourselves a beauty. Go back to what Michael Penix said to us yesterday when we chatted with him about what his official visit was like after he was in the transfer portal. First time you pick a college, it's somewhat about uniforms and it's somewhat about uh, the setting and all of the maybe ancillary stuff. He showed up at Washington and he wanted to know the receivers and he wanted to know the offensive line. I saw him at Indiana last year. He was broken. Broken. Body was beat up, spirit was beat up, didn't really want any part of it. And like a grown man, he wanted to go somewhere, a coordinator he knew, that would set him up for success with personnel that is flourishing. Both teams are trying to figure out what kickoffs can do for them. Dollars has to cower into the fall of the 11, Allison. That's what these two teams, these two quarterbacks have in common. They both transferred to schools where they were reunited with their former OCs. Bo Nix in 2019 was with Kenny Dillingham at Auburn. And as you guys mentioned, Penix with Kalen DeBoer at Indiana. And it's interesting because Penix being on campus before all the coaches were able to, he was able to get with his teammates prior to spring, uh, before the 
coaches kind of give them a head start learning this offense and DeBoer said it just really sped everything up for them it also helped them with the buy-in because Penix could vouch for the system and then Bo Nix on the other side Denny, Dillingham said having that relationship it's beneficial not just from a scheme the X's and O's it's the trust the comfort they know one another that process was already in place for those two and both of them really thriving in these systems well, there's no getting to know you anymore Irving again through the car wash and it looked like he might actually been on the back of the defender he was down at the gate of 12. Well, they found a little something running to the short side of the field putting numbers right to the field three receivers and running back they call this the short side of the field they like a matchup over there and they keep going to it there you go again there's a little side step he spins out of it and gets dragged down at the 39 by turner well, what it is doing is putting a body on a body and leaving a corner, leaving the safety. Right? Look at you got a hat for a hat for everybody into that short side. And once again, we're up over 15 missed tackles. And it's nine completed tackles by Turner, which is just too many in the run game. Right? Nix feels the pressure, throws it for Irving. In space, there is a marker down. Irving is not yet, and he gets extended to the 45. It's going to be on the right tackle. Holding. 7-1 in the offense. 10-yard penalty still. First down. Amuvai Laulu. We've called his name a bunch. Very positive plays, but he's got one of the most difficult matchups on the night right here. Whether it's Trice, whether it is Martin, in this case it's Trice. And you can see he reaches, he grabs, actually a face mask as well. And then speed and space, Jason. I mean, it's the speed advantage at the DN position. That's about the only advantage the defense has, because on the perimeter, these ducks are just getting going. And, and the Huskies in space cannot secure tackles one-on-one. Hudson. A couple of yards there. William Inge called it the open field race for space game. An advantage, the Ducks. A nice job there by Carson Bruno. You've got to squeeze. You've got to have leverage. You've got to have inside out. It is so hard in today's game with all this space if you're just living in one-on-one -on -one tackles consistently. With two coordinators who know how to use space and manipulate it so well. Nick's roaming to the right. Steps up. Uncorked down the field, Franklin! You know, Troy Franklin went to uh, the same high school as Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks of Fleetwood Mac, Menlo Atherton. Mm -hmm. And there are enough defensive backs going their own way here in the second half. Sometimes I don't know where you're going, but I trust your finish. A sprint out here by Nicks, and he can see the whole play developing in front of him. And they pick on the true freshman. Right, the loss to Perry in the corner hurts. It puts the true freshman Green from Texas in a position once again, one-on-one -on -one with the fastest duck of them all. Troy Franklin was a big-time recruit. He's still like still under 180 pounds, and he's going to gain strength. But his twitch and speed, as he almost kind of waves goodbye unintentionally to Mr. Green for another six. Scoring plays this half. 67, 76, 46, and 29. He likes it. He likes a lot of things. <laughs> it's kind of a wide array of stuff going on in this crowd. It is. This is such a fun place to watch a college football it's just awesome. And those guys that uh, try to figure out how many points are going to be scored in a game. 
I think at halftime, I've learned to trust their instincts a little bit because they're usually pretty good. And these two coordinators on both sides, equally up to the task of putting the talent in a position to thrive. We've seen five touchdowns in a matter of 11-20. This quarter is not over. Cameron Davis, little bobble. Davis keeps his feet and does get doused eventually by Dante Manning. So first down for Washington. Does this knee down? Let's see. The locals certainly thought his knee was down. Oh boy, it is. Yeah, there, Washington is going to visit that shadow of the goalpost. Oh, one it looks like. Previous play is under review. Oh, yeah. Replay has reviewed the play. The runner's knee was down while controlling the ball at the one yard line. That's one of those quick point to point. Expedited, right? Yeah, expedited replay, and this is exactly the situation that that was meant for. I have to say, this is as good of a replay booth as we've seen all year. I would second that. And this is the area they could not get out of in the first half. A three and out. And I think the faithful down in that end zone might be the loudest they've been all night for Caitlin DeBoer and company. Tip to the outside of Dudze. That was the call that I was looking for the first time around when they were down there. They kind of got in the phone booth and tried to play a little smash mouth on third and one and had to punt. Anytime it feels like Penix and Dudze, Penix and McMillan. Back tonight, Penix and Sideline warning, Oregon. First of the game. Anytime they want that one on one matchup, they got it. Fifth catch for Dudze, six for McMillan. Penix, line drive, McMillan. That's just a clothesline. That's just an RPO, right? So good luck. They've shown enough balance in the run game. It affects everybody in the front, and there's the little slant, little skinny post. Glance right off that run action. Unguardable. And Michael Penix said the guy that I looked up to playing was Teddy Bridgewater. Can you see it? I see it in composure. Teddy in two gloves wishes he could spin it like this kid. Short toss, Davis. He steps out of the ankle tackle and then eventually goes down after a gain of a couple. I think Davis has watched these other ducks on the other side and said, Former receiver Addison, you reach for my ankles, I'm going to run through those tackles like the Ducks have. Forceful effort in the second half as Tosh Lapoy is trying to figure out a way to slow down this offense. Got to hurry. Three seconds. Might need those timeouts later. This play is live. Now they're going to blow it dead. Okay. That is a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. I got penalty. Fuck it I think you were right. I think the DeBoer looked at that score and knows, and he's coached enough football and a lot of winning football on his way up. 67 and 3 as a head guy at Sioux Falls to know how valuable that timeout is and trust that this offense and Penix can get you five yards. Yeah, it's not it's not worth the five yards with 16 minutes to go as the decision there it looks like. Second down and nine. 
Penix down the middle, right on target for Polk, who just had the long touchdown. What is it going to be defensively for one of these two teams? Who's going to get a hand up? Where's a tip ball going to come from? Because this crew here providing the pocket they are with a four-man rush, and the ball that comes out with such anticipation and speed. Penix, little lob down the middle. It's Davis in space. Cam Davis pushed down by Bassa at the 42. If, if both offenses just get up and execute and just allow the big guys to do what they can do, all of the speed into space, I mean, there, there's just not a way to stop it. So I'm compelled to ask you, what happened in the first half? A little bit of feeling out process. A little rivalry. A little bit of emotion, too. Richard Newton's checked in as a tailback. They will move west over the other way and go to the pistol. That's the challenge for Tosh LaCroix is dealing with all the motion. Panics off play action. Does throw and does complete another one to McMillan. This route running is teaching tape. Was an outside receiver all through high school. He comes in the slot here and just watch this. I'm going to break down a DB, give him a little shimmy, a little shake, keep it flat. Can't do it better. Penix has thrown for 315, and there's a quarter left. Has he missed a throw? A couple of drops, and he's 21 for 25. Spectacular night for Penix. This is a miss. That's a miscommunication. And he shakes his head there. He is expecting Polk versus a single safety to take it up the seam. He cuts to the post, but that's about as negative a body energy as you're going to get, which is yet another strength of his that he does. Credit to a Teddy Bridgewater, who had such poise and composure. Adams the tailback. First down at the end of the third quarter. Feel like the saloon doors are shutting and the tumbleweeds are rolling through. It's one town, but it's not big enough for the both of them. College football sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Shout after the third here at Austin. Big happy family. I'm not waiting to the end of this game to tell you how much I love college football. How much I'm here for all of it. And these two teams are putting on a spectacular show. 35 points in the third quarter. The 114th meeting. Washington's drive started at the one. Pennix. To throw. End zone. Incomplete for a doomsday. Brian Addison on the coverage. And it takes a former wide receiver to finally break up a pass to a wide receiver. And you see the speed and length of Addison as he closes. Maybe a tad early contact with that left arm. Could you have easily seen that call as it impeded Odunze? But he gets away with the early contact. Along with the right arm around the back as well. Second down for Washington. Davis. Hunting the sideline. And he's down at about the two-yard line. Jeffrey Bossa dragged him down third and short. What did William Inge say about space? There's a marker down here, too. It's a race for space. The race for space. Yeah. And a couple systems that know just how to get those runners in the 200-meter blocks and turn the corner. 
After the play. After the play. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 13. This penalty would be forced half the distance with an automatic first down. So it was going to be third and one from the two. Now the first down already has happened, and it's first and goal. I see he got away with a little bit of the early contact on the pass interference, but these guys are just flying, man. It is so hard to play defense against elite teams, especially groups that have offensive lines like these two do, that can run it, that can protect it, and certainly QBs that can throw it. First down throw off play action. Given ground. He throws into traffic. And it is intercepted off the deflection. He didn't have to throw it. He did. And Bossa ripped it off. I think two of the most shocking plays today were the Ducks going for it at the end of half in this play by Penix. They've had success running it. You're into the short area of the field. You just have to throw that to the fourth row. And he's done it all year. Yep. I, I, Sewell got the tip on this ball. I mean, he has Westover and give Chris Sewell an immense amount of credit for getting his hands up. But on first down, that is a play that the fifth-year senior will get on the phone with Ryan Grubb and say, I know better. Out of character stuff happens in rivalry games across the country all year, and this is no exception. A little step through there from Whittington, getting out of that end zone. Sometimes when you're so hot, you think you're invincible. When you have fitted into tight windows, and you think, well, this one I'll just zing right by, Sewell. But I said to you earlier, there's got to be a tip. There's got to be something. It's about the only way you're going to slow this thing down. Sewell tips at Bossa, an incredible effort to finish it. Hitting it again, changing direction. He's got the first down, and this is what Oregon has done well, sort of under the radar this year with all the 40-point games, is run the football. Uh, this, I think, becomes with a defensive-minded head coach in Dan Lanning, who is hyper-aggressive. He's watched this offense run for 215 yards, well, 243 yards now. I think he reminds Kenny Dillingham the Huskies don't have an answer for the run game. And Bo Nix is awfully dangerous in that phase as well. Nix to throw. Got it to Hudson. And Hudson gets nailed just short of the line to gain. But you talked about it off the top. As you see the big lick that Hudson takes here. You talked about it. That both coaches, and Allison talked about it too, have leaned into the rivalry. Dan Lanning was playing the Washington fight song over and over again at practice this week to the point where basically all of his players said, we don't want to hear it ever again. The stakes are high emotionally here tonight. It's Whittington. Well, in the previous regime, Mario Cristobal built a crew to run it recruited tremendous people at the line of scrimmage. They've developed them. I pointed to Alex Forsyth, who again and again is the captain and the voice in the middle of it. And these are moments that old lines and run games like this live for. Bucky Irving for a first down. In a situation like this, what demeanor do you want out of an offensive line? <laughs> I want an elephant look just right down the field. I know they call it four-minute drill. Let's go eight-minute drill. Let's huff and puff just like that and be like a bunch of elephants just stomping and stomping and stomping your way down the field. Nick's got it out of his hand quickly again. Hudson in space. He lost the ball. He got back on it. It looks like that was a live football. And in some ways, honestly, that's just a, a run game. It's just an extended toss sweep. 
today is you see. Really is a fumble forward out of bounds. The ball will oh, he's turn down. to the spot of the fumble second down. Yeah, but I think he was down more. anyway. It's basically the same regardless of how it plays out. Now it's Oregon using some clock on a three minute plus drive so far. Irving didn't like door number one. And door number two got him two yards. Jeremiah Martin to tackle. So do you sell out here if you're Washington? Do you just run blitz and put everybody at the line of scrimmage on third and two? But if so, that really burdens some inexperienced young corners out in one on one as well. They will not do it. Seven in the box. Whittington charging forward. First down, Oregon. His feet are so good. Christopher Rule, the linebacker, watch him right here. He's got him sized up until he doesn't. I mean, that's Allen Iverson crossover stuff. That is a great call. That is a basketball crossover. Why not go right back there and he just jams on the beard? It's second down coming up. You know what I love? What's I love November football. And just the I love you, love you. On just a chilly night, watching the big guys, watching these hogs right here, and just the breath coming out as they are expending everything they got. So I gave you the Allen Iverson crossover. What is this? Well, it's not Dikembe Mutombo on the block. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I... It's no fun to be a defensive player in this game. Nope. Five minutes plus. The ball's been in the hands of Oregon. Remember we were talking on Alex Forsythe last time we were here and we asked him, what does a good Dan Lanning impression have to include? And he said, well, it's definitely the phrase power in the unit and connected, right? He's all about the team atmosphere of specific rooms in the facility, and this offensive line is showing that right here. They're grown men, Jason, and they're even without Ryan Walk. They walk, they lost in the first quarter, but the rest of them are picking up the slack and imposing their will. Whittington. Man. And what happens, and we've heard this from so many defensive coordinators this year, we see the end result. Right? You're watching, you're watching the ball, you're looking at that one on one missed tackle, but what you're not seeing is the guys up front not defeating blocks. You've got to defeat blocks. You've got to squeeze space. You've got to make it difficult because if you're timing again in one on one situations, advantage offense. And look at this drive. Brockett's 10 runs and two passes, and the passes have been like runs to this point on the drive. A little sidestep again in the soft shoe for Whittington has another Oregon first down. Well, at some point here, I think you have to nick the front. At some point, you have just got to put people at the line of scrimmage. You've got to bring those safeties from eight yards deep to four yards deep, if you're William Inge. You've got to do something, but then the challenge is Bo Nix can look at it and go, okay, great. Then I'll take advantage of some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups to the outside, but they've got no answers at the point of attack right now. Yeah, does then Kenny Dillingham already have the answer to your question that you posed to him? Irving on the spin. He's wiped out after a gain of four. We're under seven to go suddenly. 
And this is what championship teams do in November. As Yula Foscio is back in there trying to stop this run game, but this is championship football. Explosive plays, check mark. Respond at halftime, check mark. Go out and finish in the fourth quarter and pound the football. Typically what the best teams do in November and December. It's another run this time. It's next on the keeper, and it's going to set up another third and one, which again puts two and a half more minutes off the clock in peril. We got an injured player down. Somebody was signaling he's hurt, but they're going to get Tupatala off the field. So Bruner comes in. Under six to go. An eight minute plus march down the field. Whittington did get the first down. Jeremiah Martin came hammering through there, but it is a first down Oregon. That was an incredible effort by Martin right here coming all the way down the line of scrimmage and actually stopping one of these backs in their tracks for the first time, but not before that ball at first contact got to the 15. So Penix threw the interception on the tip ball. Washington was about to go in. The Huskies haven't seen the ball since. A little test of the break pads that time for Whittington. Look at these offensive linemen. How many plays in this drive now? It's a 16-play drive that just turned to 17. How many 17-play drives? They're, they don't get in the huddle. Look at the condition you can see right now. Forsyth's shoulder, it is barking. His body is hurting, and these guys just line up for more. Yeah, about five minutes ago, I think they forded the river. This is as close to the Oregon Trail as you're going to see in one drive in college football season. Irving the tailback down to one. It's a high snap and Nix just throws it right at the foot of Irving. Smart play by Bo Nix. Number zero was in the area of the pass. There is no intention to run. Yeah, that is a tremendous play by Bo Nix. I said Forsyth is barking a little bit. His body, something's not quite right. He's fighting through it. Leads to a high snap, and that is that saves you 15 yards of real estate. That is incredible what a throwaway can do. And you can see it. Forsyth is hurting right now. The anchor of that offensive line. Third and five for Bonix and Oregon. Timeout call before the snap and before the play clock hit zero. Prior to the snap, first time out of the half, Oregon. Last time Washington had the ball was this play. Penix had it tipped and intercepted. Ten minutes of game time later, they haven't seen it since Bossa picked it off. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for more than 150 years. What is that? That is a pick six for Kenny Wheaton, Brock. Have you never seen this before? You know what, you're going to handle the last 426 on your own. You and Bo Garrett. Well, it's one of the biggest plays in the rivalry's history. I'm sorry, I know it touches a nerve for your family. A pick here set up Oregon for this drive that has been sturdy and machine-like. It is a 10-minute drive, and it's third and five. To another whistle and a timeout, Washington. Is your mic still open? Are you still here? It's third down and five. We'll check on Brock when we come back. Allison may have an update. Tomorrow on Fox, an NFL doubleheader starts with the Vikings taking on the Bills. We'll see if Josh Allen plays. That is one of the games of the year. Historic rivals, Dak and the Cowboys, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, a showdown for the ages at Lambeau, all on Fox of the Fox Sports app. And if it's anything like this, Paul, 
you're going to want to watch the whole thing. Well, watch Bo Nix running because it's been awfully good down here in the red zone as they once again spread the whole formation out. If there is not a linebacker in the middle there, Bo Nix will use his legs. They get to the five for a first down. There it is. And Nix is met at the eight-yard line. Alex Cook. Bo Nix on the carry. I knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. But most importantly for the Huskies, Alex Cook knew it was coming. They almost set that formation defensively up to trigger that look and that draw as Bo Nix is down as well. Nix is down at the 14-yard line. It's a big hit from Cook, the senior. Six-year senior. As he sat up. Watch his eyes. He's walking it off right here, Jason. The locals didn't like the hit, but it's what you have to do. And you can see he starts to favor him right here. Right there. It just grabs. So the training staff is out there, and Ty Thompson, who we've seen for a grand total of 20 passes this year, the redshirt freshman, is getting ready. Now the question is, they're going to help Bo Nix off. Oh, you've got to kick a field goal here. I mean, you're not going to put a redshirt freshman in a fourth and three environment, especially when you go up seven with a field goal. Hey, I mean, that is not a good sign for the Oregon Ducks. Kenny Dillingham's protege, Bo Nix, is very gingerly walking off the field. And Oregon's perfect Pac-12 season rests in 404 here tonight but also down the road with Utah coming in next week and then a trip to Corvallis and then maybe the Pac-12 title game. Bonix's status will hang out there for the moment. For now Camden Lewis from 26 drives it through and Oregon has a seven point lead. But Bo Nix not in good shape at the moment over on the sideline. We'll check on him when we come back. A 20 play drive, 91 yards in 10 and a half minutes. And now Washington's offense, which has been orphaned without the ball, will get it back. Thompson there as Bo Nix is in the injury tent, and you know Michael Penix wants to make up for that interception at the goal line. to take a seven-point lead. This kick is out of bounds. It's the third one of the half. Kick out of bounds. Ball be placed the 35-yard line. First and 10, Washington. Well, you mentioned it. Michael Penix Jr. now is second in a single season in school history to Cody Pickett. And, and Penix, who at Indiana was a very good player but didn't put up these gargantuan numbers. He, like Bo Nix, has been totally transformed in a new home. He was eight yards shy of a 300-yard game a week ago. He's over 300 again. That's nine on the season. And, well, we've seen it, and these faithful have seen it. And he sets his feet and rips it, man. He throws it all over the yard. Rolling to his left. Penix throws incomplete to the sideline. Gonzalez on the coverage of Polk. Yeah, that's back to back plays now. Noah Sewell is right in the passing lane. That did not lead to an interception, but it led to the ball flying out of bounds. We've seen a little more of Sewell as a pass rusher the last few weeks, and it's played to his downhill instincts. Trips at the top. Odunze comes this way. Gonzalez watching him. 
Penix to throw. It's a low pass, and it is caught by Davis, sliding out of bounds, third down. Good news for the Ducks as well. Looks like Dorless is back in the game. He's taped up like so many of these Warriors on both sides, sucking it up, playing through injury. And here come the faithful and awesome. Two timeouts for Washington. Panics clean pocket to throw down the sideline. He drops it in for Davis down the sideline. And there's nobody home. and there are very few in all the land that can make that throw college or pro from one hash all the way across the field with a safety in half coverage there is no way that you would have quarterbacks make that throw Ben and Williams has played for six years he can't believe it number four he couldn't get to that ball what a rocket shot Michael Penix Jr. now has the single game record for Washington against Oregon. 399 yards. He just passed your brother Damon who did 327 and 95. And there's still three minutes of fun and maybe more left. 62 yards, the single game record for a Washington quarterback against Oregon. The quarterback question remains for the Oregon Ducks over on the sideline. With Ty Thompson possibly coming in for Bo Nix, who is in the injury tent. As this goes into the end zone, back to the touchdown. You're not supposed to be able to do this. To throw this ball 45 yards on my stopwatch in two seconds. This is Bennett Williams, okay? Experienced player. He's trying to get to this ball. But you know what Velo does? It breaks baseball bats and it busts angles like that. Please start the 42nd clock. And now, Ty Thompson has to respond. Bo Nix is out. He was injured on the last drive. A young man who won back-to-back -back state titles in high school in the state of Arizona thrust into one of the biggest rivalries on the West Coast and in college football. Whittington behind Ferguson for a couple of yards. He's waited for this moment. Big time recruit. He's watched transfers come in. Veteran guys play ahead of him. These are the moments that you've got to calm down and trust yourself. And most importantly, trust the people around you. Doesn't have to be all about you. He's thrown 20 passes this year. Game it to Allison downstairs. We're waiting for official word on Bo Nix, but guys, I wanted to let you know because I know you saw him getting helped off the field and unable to walk off the field. When he got to the bench area, he was able to walk on his own very slowly. Uh, you could tell he was very much in pain, and it looked like when he was on the field, they were taking a look at his right ankle, but as you guys mentioned, he remains in the injury tent. I'll keep you updated. Thank you, Allison. Third down and five for Ty Thompson's Oregon Ducks. It's a run, it's Irving, and he's going to be very close, and it looks like he might be just short of the line to gain. By about a half a yard. You know what that 10-minute drive did? What's it that? shortened this game dramatically. And holding Oregon to a field goal critical as we see Nick's trying to talk himself into the game. He's hopping up and down. He wants to go in. Fourth down and one for Oregon from its own 34. Will they snap it here? Yes, and Whittington slips. Washington takes over. Unreal. I can't believe what we just watched. Tremendous penetration by Yulafoshio. He may have made the tackle, 
The Whittington's feet fall from underneath them, but more than that, Jason, if you don't take a timeout, Bo Nix is trying to tell you the best sneaker in college football, that he's ready to go back into the game. And Dan Lanning in that moment does not take the timeout and has set the Huskies up with prime real estate. Two timeouts for each team. 86 seconds on the clock. Penix to throw. He takes the tight end west over across the 25-yard line. Jason, why did they not take the time out? I, I don't know. Bo Nix was hopping up and down. You have two of them left. A wild sequence that has big college football playoff ramifications and Pac-12 ramifications while we're at it. It's going to be third down and one in their Penix instead of forcing a ball that like one that led to the pick earlier. He throws it out of bounds, third and one. One minute flat. Two first year head coaches. Who do you trust in the biggest play of the game yet? The run game and Davis. He's not going to get there. Brandon Dorless, Noah Sewell, fourth down. Second time out of the half, Oregon. Now Oregon Watch uses a timeout. And it rests on the leg of Peyton Henry like it did last week as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Yeah, the third quarter was a blur of nothing but offensive explosion between both sides. Defenses had absolutely no answer. Couldn't make a tackle, couldn't contain explosive plays. Two elite quarterbacks went home run for home run including that dime to Mr. Franklin again, and you wonder, would there be enough points on the scoreboard? For Noah Sewell with the big tip, Bossa the interception. A 10-minute drive, 20 plays ensues, but it ends only in a field goal. Penix, touchdown, and here you go. We ran into Peyton Henry's father earlier today over the weekend, and he said, I think I'm the only person in the stadium that cares about the win. Peyton Henry is looking for his second straight game winner for the Washington Huskies. This is good. Thank you, good. delivery by the sixth year kicker. That would have been good with the old arena goal post. He absolutely hits it clutch. But there is a lot of time. And I think Bo Nix is coming back in this game. And those fans that may be bumming right now will hear a roar when number 10 comes back on the field. See this too, that third and one call. I don't know if UW sidelines could see Bo Nix hopping. I don't know if they knew whether or not he could come back into the game. But that was a pretty conservative third on one, third and one call. And had they known that number 10's coming back in, I think I put that ball in Penix's hands and trust him on that third and one. Instead, Washington takes the field goal and leaves some time. Goes to kick it away. Fair catch for Dollars. Bonix. We told you about his competitiveness. We told you about the fact that in high school, he gave up a long touchdown in the very next play from scrimmage. 
He had his favorite run of his high school career because he was just so mad that he gave up the touchdown. He wants to be on the field, and he will be with 51 seconds. And he's got to get it to about 45 yards as a field goal. We saw Lewis miss earlier from 52, 53. You got a timeout. And he's got to know, to your point, that those legs, if that pocket breaks down, are some of his most valuable tools. On the roll, Nix wants to throw, slings it incomplete off the hand of Irving and just not on target, second down. Is he hobbling a little? A little bit. Awesome what do you think? Ryan. Yeah, that does not look like just the normal giddy-up right there. We've Forsyth. seen Alex Forsythe in pain earlier tonight as well. You know that has to be so debilitating in this moment if he can't get up off his knee. The bedrock of this Oregon offense. I mean, these young men have emptied the tank. Physically, mentally, emotionally. <laughs> See Powers Johnson. He is a very capable center. He came into the game a week ago. Adrian Clem there, the old line coach. He is more than competent to play in the center position. But to your point, communicating, calming. That stud right there that is just trained to work that shoulder and that arm back into place. And this also gives the Huskies now time on their side to realize it is Bo Nix. It's not the redshirt freshman Thompson that is out there in the plan for the next 45 seconds. The Oregon Ducks have one of the greatest home win streaks in the country right now, third in the FBS, but also in school history. The streak started with a win over a ranked Washington team in 2018. Will it end tonight against Washington? You've got to attack that true freshman corner at some point in 45 seconds, don't you? You would think so. Nix wants to throw. Down the middle of the field, and incomplete. Dropped by Irving, third down. Ooh, he had some turf in front of him, too, and we've seen the damage he does with any space. Third down, 10. This place is going to be off the planet. As quiet as we've heard it all night long with Oregon's undefeated Pac-12 possibility on the line. The season one. Nick steals the rush, and for the second time all year, he's sacked. Trice got in there. Fourth down. Jason, this is a three-man rush, and we have seen this tonight. Amuvai Laulu just gets beat off the jump, and Bo Nix doesn't have that explosion. He didn't have that bounce. He is trying to fight through injury, but Trice feasts, and the Ducks have to burn their final timeout. The Arizona-UCLA game is starting on FS2 and the Fox Sports app. For those of you watching here on Fox, Arizona-UCLA is coming up next at the conclusion of our game here in Eugene. And you see on the sideline, Jalen McMillan, who had one of the biggest plays in this game, reaching over Christian Gonzalez for an alternating possession catch, trying to fire up the troops for one more stop. And that guy's calm and cool, but I guarantee you, in his heart, he's saying one more time. Just one more snap for the biggest win in his career. Oregon's won 15 of the last 17 against Washington. A number six ranking on the line for the Ducks. Fourth and 14. Knicks throws. Knicks got it there. Franklin first down. Oregon. Hustle down. Got to hustle. Get to the line. Twenty-five seconds. Knicks scanning. 
Drops it off. Bucky Irving wants to get to the sideline. Now dodges across midfield. Takes a hit over on the sideline. The crowd wanted a marker. 14 seconds to go. And ZTF here on the end. That's a chance, but as we have seen with Bucky Irving time and again, breaks that tackle right there. And gets out of bounds to stop the clock. No timeouts. 14 seconds. Oregon winners of eight straight. Cannot get set. And there is a whistle before the snap. It's a timeout, Washington. Second time out of the half. Let's Washington. take a look at our Ram power player brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve over 400 yards for Michael Penix Jr. Did not flinch. Critical interception late, and you just knew that he was going to respond. And boy, did he ever with one of the throws of the college football season right now. But even after that interception, guys were squawking a little bit. You just did not see him lose composure at all. He's been in big moments. He's beaten Penn State. He's beaten Michigan when he was at Indiana. But there wouldn't be one quite like this in this venue tonight against number six in the country. The long this year for Camden Lewis is 44 yards. That would be at the 27. 14 seconds for Bonix. Have to block the edges. Nick's rolling. Has to throw it quickly. Got it out there in the field of play. Hudson with time ticking. The clock stops for the first down. Hudson goes down. And now look. Hudson is down and hurt. Because the clock was stopped for a first down to move the chains, there would be, in this situation, no 10-second runoff. And that's exactly what the official is telling Kaitlyn DeBoer right now. If it is caught short of the sticks, this game is over. Mm -hmm. And Kaitlyn is shaking his head, and he knows this is what happens in the greatest of rivalry games. It goes down to the very last second. So now, when he gets up, you have to be ready to clock, clock, clock it immediately. That's exactly right. And they're going to say that right now. So Hudson has to come off. Washington uses a timeout. So, it's first down. Oregon has the ball inside the 40-yard line. What do you run here? Well, the ball has to go beyond the marker. You cannot, I think, take any risk to catch it short of the marker. So you've got to get it past the marker. This is outside the range of Camden Lewis, who again is tremendously accurate, but not the greatest of length. Six seconds for Bonix. Speaking of composure. Four seconds. Nix. 
to the sideline, and this is Franklin at the sideline. He caught the ball, and they're going to say he is out of bounds. I believe there's a marker in there as well. That was right on the sideline. Did he go out of bounds and come back in? What is this marker for? There's an official without a hat, so it very well could be that. Now, is he forced out? Is he bumped and pushed out of bounds? That's the conversation. Illegal touching. Number one in the offense. Went out of bounds on his own. Return. The first player to touch the pass. The penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. At the previous spot as well. And just one second left. Now, again, the question is, was he forced Correct. out of bounds? If so, that's a totally different story. Exactly. Dean Blandino's watching this. We got one second. Dean, what do you see? Yeah, looking at that now, whether he was forced out is not reviewable, but whether he actually stepped on the sideline is. So replay can look at whether he did step out, but whether he was forced out is not a reviewable aspect. Dean, as you look at that, and they are going to see whether or not he was out of bounds, as you look at that on first blush, is he forced out of bounds? It certainly looks like there was some contact, but again, that's a judgment call that the official has to make, and it has to be something overt. How how open and obvious does overt have to be? What's an example of overt? I think anything, when you're looking at fouls like that, you want to see something that jumps out. If there's just a touch or anything like that, then they're going to say that the receiver went out, went out of bounds on his own. So again, they cannot review this aspect of it. What they're going to be looking at is, did that right foot right there step on the sideline before he reestablished and then came back in to make the catch? What do you see? From that angle, I can't tell. Yeah. I will say this, that, that linesman down the line did not hesitate. He is looking right down at the back judge, correct? And he is looking for that. that that's exactly what he's looking at. He has the look down the line, and he's got the foot touching the white, and then the, and then the receiver reestablishing. And I will say this too, Dean, that is a pretty savvy play there by the freshman Green to not leave any room for Franklin. Right, kind of hip checked Absolutely. him. Yeah, kind of hip checked him, closed that space so that Franklin was going to go by him because they're playing, remember, to keep everything in bounds, to keep it in front of They're going to throw short. They were not going to be able to with where Green was positioned there, and that positioning also forced him out of bounds. I will say, if you're an Oregon fan, though, you say if the margin is that small on the sideline of the foot on the edge, then why didn't we get the benefit of a small touch guiding him yep. to the sideline, right? If it's one margin one way, shouldn't it be the same margin of how much the touch has to be on the other side? That would be their argument. What was Dean's word in the rule book? Overt. Overt. Is that overt? Such Again, it's one call. of those gray areas. Yeah, that's right. And I think most would say, let the players determine the outcome, right? Let the players. You said earlier about this replay bo booth. They have been on it from beginning to end. All 59 minutes and 59 seconds down to the final one. By the way, if you're tuning in for the Arizona UCLA game, that'll come up right after we're done here at Autzen Stadium. Now, if this is a penalty, it's going to be loss of down from the previous spot as well. Is where the penalty would be enforced from. The ramifications of this call are enormous. After reviewing the play, the ruling of the of, uh, illegal touching stands. Second down, the previous spot. The clock will start on the snap. So that will be debated forever, yep. but it's not reviewable, the act of pushing. The judgment, the judgment right. is not. Now here comes a Hail Mary with just one second left as well. Well, this ball's, ball's got to get to the end zone. Remember, Lewis was short from 54 earlier. 
from the 38-yard line. One last heave for Bo Nix. Feeling the rush again. Climbing the pocket and throwing incomplete. The Washington Huskies have upset Oregon. And tonight, Michael Penix Jr. owns the Pacific Northwest.